happens at the next hearing on uh, November 8, 2023 at 8 o'clock a.m. You will get notice of that in writing. Are you able to post a bond, sir? Uh, can I, first again, I just feel good when I'm, we all say good morning to each other. Uh, I just want to say that again. That just made me feel good. But okay. um, I never knew about none of these court dates. Um, also, before WAC, I was working at Tentacle and they was taking child support out of my check. I've been working like for the last two years. So I'm, I'm really kind of like not understanding it because I came down here several times to the friend of the court down in the basement and told them that I was working and they started taking money out of my check. And uh, I've been, <coughs> excuse me. And I've been working at WAC for like uh, 90 days. Like I say, before that, I was working at Tentacle as a welder. And I worked 13 days straight, 12 hours a day. I'm a supervisor for 47 people. I uh, really turned my life around. One of Sandria Parks, Emily Parks, which is my daughter. I just gave her 200 um, yesterday. Uh, my son, Dwayne Johnson. I've been spending time with him, bought him a car, and now he's trying to get his permit. I just didn't know nothing about all these warrants, and I, I've i been around. Okay. And I don't understand how he had all these warrants. Okay. Well, what happens is oftentimes when people move, they don't change their address, and when you don't change your address with for the court, they send it to your last known address. I've been, oh, okay. Well, I've been staying at my house for over 10 years. Well, okay. And I have got out of prison i did get out of prison quite some time back but since getting out of prison i don't work at ac foundry they was taking child support i don't work at uh clemens they was taking child support i don't work at tentacle magnum they was taking child support now at wac and then they automatic sent a paper out to the friends of the court i just don't understand how i even got warrants okay. but i'm already on WHC, obviously, you said you've been working there for approximately 90 days, which would be about the time that they haven't been collecting support. So have you seen have you seen uh, support taken out of your check at WHC? Uh, they, my, uh, my check stuff, I need to set up this email thing. It's a little different than working in factories. It's a little more of a career. Uh, I haven't seen it, but I, I assume they was. But well, you can't, you can't assume, sir, because uh, if you assume, then that's uh, the problem is that uh, yeah. taking it out, then you're going to be dragged into court like this. Yeah, I see, Your Honor. Are, are you able to post a bond, sir, in these cases? Uh, I, I approximately probably got $500 on my debit card. I, I've been paying my insurance, paying my bills and stuff. I don't get paid until... Thursday, but I do have five hundred dollars to my okay. name. What I'm what I'm gonna do is uh I'm gonna set your bond in each case in the amount of a hundred dollars. So it'd be three hundred. You can post that and then you'll be able to be released. Do you have any questions? Uh no, sir. Uh no. just that I've been doing good. I ain't been okay. in jail in a long time, so well then you have you'll have to appear back on the uh, November eighth date. You can speak to your caseworker and get everything worked out. You may not have to come back on that date. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Uh, the docket, again, the findings appear to be incorrect. According to the police reports, counts one and two should have been a burglary with an assault or battery. Do both sides agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. So uh, based on there no, being no objection, I do make a finding of burglary uh, with an assault or battery on counts one and two. I also am making a finding of uh, proof evident presumption great on counts one and two, and I am going to hold him no bond on counts one and two. Count three, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. I do find probable cause as well. Uh, Mr. Linder, first of the state with counts three and any priors. One uh, what sure, go ahead, essentially. Uh, 
On count one, uh, Ms. Edgley, for the second victim, he threatened to kill both of the listed victims while he was inside the house while he allegedly battered one of them. So based on that assault, that threat to kill while he was inside the home and allegedly battering one of the victims out of four, I am going to maintain my finding of probable cause, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Linder, whenever you're ready. Yes, thank you, Judge. Uh, 2011, All right, thank you, Mr. Romero, sir. Uh, just to reiterate the point, we couldn't hear anything what's going on, but I just want to let uh the court be aware uh and speaking with mr natson uh, i do have some concerns he has uh, several mental health issues um and also medication that he needs to be on so we're going to be asking both the mental health screening and a medical screening we're going to be asked to be provisionally appointed uh, mr natson wanted me to ask the court um basically he needs help but he he does not believe he can get that help from the inside he wanted me to ask the court to exercise his discretion in having him in, uh, have some sort of reasonable release conditions of level one so he can get the appropriate help from the outside so that is what the request i'm making on his behalf today Thank you. That will be denied based on the allegations. There being four listed victims, as I said on the record, alleged uh, that one of the victims was actually battered inside the home while he allegedly told uh, two of the listed victims he was going to kill them and then allegedly try to run over uh, one of the said victims with his automobile. I am going to continue that no bond hold on counts one and two. He'll have to file an Arthur hearing uh, motion with his division judge. Sir, you cannot return to the, uh, where did he go? We're going to have to a brief moment okay. just right now to collapse. Judge, I have a question. He did what? Yes. No, one and two. Our visit or is yes. that an overnight? Okay. Nope. Four hour. Okay. So it's not supervised, not restricted, even alcohol before parenting time? No, they cannot consume. They can drink before the, parenting time? They no, there's a no. AM, you're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. I'm checking a couple of people here. Uh oh. Hello. Hello. Your first and last name, please. Jacob Boyd. Uh -oh. Okay, Jacob, I'm going to place you in the waiting room. Do okay. not disconnect, okay? We do have three hearings scheduled at 9 o'clock, okay? All righty. Thank you. Please unmute. I am unmuted. Good morning. First and last name, please. Jennifer Martinez. All right. All right, Jennifer, I am going to, we do have Richard back and we have Attorney Sharp. Um, no, Attorney Sharp, oh, yes. Can you hear me? Good morning. Yep. Good morning. Calling, calling case 2020-1981 DC Richard Beck versus Jennifer Martinez. Today is Monday, October 30th, 2023 at 9, 12 a.m. Court will note the appearance of Mr. Fernandez on behalf of the uh, plaintiff and uh, defendant appearing in pro per. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion to show cause for denial of parenting time and for makeup parenting time. Mr. Fernandez. Um, yes, Your Honor. Between the periods of July 5th to July 28th, 2023, and August 9th to August 22nd, 2023, the plaintiff's parenting time was denied. Uh, the defendant was arrested for parental kidnapping and 
we filed a show cause and that was addressed the children were be to return but we we haven't addressed the, the issue of makeup parenting time yet and we believe that the plaintiff would be entitled to at least 21 days of makeup parenting time thank you okay thank you uh miss martinez what's your response hi your honor my response is that um i do not overturn anything um <clears throat> He had me falsely arrested for parental kidnapping when he knows full and well that me and our child left July 1st in an attempt to escape from our lives. He was violently attacking us, to which he just pled guilty to. Um, the kidnapping charge has been dissolved. There's no legal grounds on it. The warrant should have never been signed. So, Mr. Beck claims that I owe him from July 5th to July 28th. Court dockets say he didn't even get bonded out till the 14th. Um, I can't tell you how many times if I go through this list of allegations, how many times this man has perjured himself. Okay. Um, well, let me let me stop you there. Sounds like we're going to need an evidentiary hearing, and uh, we don't have time for that today. Nor am I going to take any testimony today. So, but well, well I am giving my testimony. Um, I don't owe that man Pam, anything. We don't take testimony on motion hearings. I'm listening to what you have to say. And you're disputing the charges, so we're going to set it for a hearing. Well, no, um, my charges for parental kidnapping have been dropped. Mr. Beck pled guilty to okay. years of spousal Apparently dependence. Apparently, you're not listening to what I'm saying. On this motion, you're disputing and contesting the motion. So we'll have to have a hearing and take testimony and evidence at that particular time. So that's what we'll do in this uh, particular matter. We'll set it for an evidentiary hearing. And uh, we'll be able to take the uh, evidence at that particular Your time. Honor, I would just like to note that I have a child to take care of. Mr. Beck has brought me to court numerous times for these frivolous motions. Um, is this an attempt to see me since, you know, I've gone no contact with him? The only time that Mr. Beck has had access to me is through your court on these Zoom hearings. I mean, how much longer are you going to allow his continued domestic abuse to continue through your courtroom? Okay, ma'am. Everybody has a right to file pleadings in a particular case. If I get that, but I also have civil rights to be protected from my abuser. Ma'am, ma'am, he has a right to file pleadings. The attorney has filed pleadings on his behalf. The court has to address those. You may not like it, but legally he's entitled to do that. So well, let's address will, the lies. The court will listen to the motion when they properly file that. So we're going to set it for an evidentiary hearing and we'll That's take the money at that time. Okay. This man needs to move on with his life and leave me the hell alone. Ma'am. Court will conclude this matter at 9 15 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you, Your Honor. Are you ready? Yes. All right, the court is going to call 2022 CR2519, State of Texas versus Leanne Lehman. Can I have uh, parties announced for the record? Brittany Sparks for the state. Doug Campbell for Ms. Lehman. And are you Ms. Lehman? Yes, ma'am. All right, counsel, I'm going to show you what's entitled the acknowledgement. Have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? Yes. The court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Ms. Lehman, I'm showing you what's entitled application for community supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Next, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review it with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? Yes, Judge. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, Judge. Next, Ms. Lehman, I'm going to show you what's entitled court admonishments and defendant waivers and affidavit or admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand your charge of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, four grams, 200 grams, that's a second degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea bargain agreement. 
If for any reason the court does not follow your plea bargain agreement and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea bargain agreement in this case? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses to this offense? Yes, Judge. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? Yes. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes. Ms. Lehman, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea bargain agreement to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived the right to jury trial. Next, I'm showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that page with your attorney and get you understand it? Yes, According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at seven years in the prison. There's a $1,500 fine. State recommends community supervision. And there's $60 restitution to Bear County Criminal Investigation Laboratory for testing. Did you understand that to be the plea bargain agreement? Defense is at the plea bargain agreement. It is, Judge. State is at the plea bargain agreement. Yes, Judge. Next, I'm showing you the paragraph entitled Waiver of Appeal Paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it in both places? Yes, did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Judge. Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. The state is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of five years. There be a top evaluation and 200 hours of community service restitution. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yeah. Then to the offense is charged in the indictment. How do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence? Yes, Judge. State offer states exhibit one and all attachments. Any objections? No objections. Ms. Lehman, I'm going to show you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? I'm sorry? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony? Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. The court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. The court will accept into evidence statements that it's one in attachments and review the same. All right, after we are in states to this one in attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Judge. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Judge, I know this this, this isn't my client's first film, um, but she has expressed a desire to change and would greatly appreciate the court uh, following the recommendations for community supervision. All right, Ms. Lehman, who is uh, Emily Mayhew to you? The mayor's daughter in law. Ex daughter in law, my ex daughter. When's the last time you've seen her? It's been at least months, about seven, eight months. All right, do you have any children? Four. What are their ages? 
36 down to 26. All right. Do you have any grandchildren? I have three. What are their ages? Two, two months and nine months. Before you were arrested, were you employed? I have my clean house is yesterday. What's your drug of choice? Nothing now. <laughs> now oh, um, it's, it's, let's be honest, sometimes it your was, drug of choice is nothing now because you're in custody. No, no, I've been, I've been clean for four years. It was, it was methamphetamine. Judge, Ms. Lehman has a mother uh, that she has to care for, and I believe that that mother is ill. All right, so how is she clean for four years? In this case, it's from 2021. My math is I, not the best. She wasn't, wasn't using the, she wasn't using the methamphetamine. She just had it in her care possession. Yeah, I wasn't using it. I have, I've been drinking, smoking, everything. I don't do anything anymore. Right, see, I don't understand why it's in her possession if she's not using it. They found it in her purse. Have, but it, I wasn't using it. It's in her care and control, but not hers. No. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't identify whose it was. So, are you in a relationship? No, ma'am. I got divorced last year. Okay. So, where are you planning on staying if you're with my mom? All right. And who lives with your mom? Just me, my mom, my daughter. And you, that's your adult daughter? Yes, ma'am. Is that the adult daughter that has children? No, she don't have any children. My son is here. Any other questions for me, Ms. Hunt? No, you aren't. All right, this is uh, what the court is going to do. I'm going to send you to seven years in the prison, suspended and probated for five years. There's a $1,500 fine. That will be probated. $60 restitution for testing. Two hundred hours of community service restitution. Forty of those hours will be waived if you provide proof of the COVID vaccination. The court is not requiring you get the COVID vaccination, but if you do, forty of those hours will be deducted. And for the court, that includes the full regiment, so that would include the booster shot. We're going to order parenting classes. Uh, once you complete the parenting classes, the remaining of the community service hours should be waived. I think you need that if at some point in time, I will allow you to babysit your grandchildren. But that's not going to happen today. You understand? Yes, ma'am. There should be no unsupervised contact with minors. So what that means is your children cannot say, oh, I'm just going to run here. Let me let you watch the baby. You cannot yeah, have, you understand? Yeah, I hardly get to see him. Well, I mean, there's a reason for that. No, no parents. Well, here's the thing. They're in jail. When people don't allow you to see grandchildren, there's a reason for it. And we have to look internally and find out why. Maybe there's a child protective services case and child protective services saying no visitation. But we need to figure out what we've done. No, I know. I know. You know, the reason why we can't see our grandchildren. There's going to be proof of employment within 30 days. There's going to be no employment as a home health care provider with minors or cleaning homes. I can't have you cleaning homes until or being uh, put in any type of fiduciary duties. And your attorney will explain to you what I mean by that until I know for sure that you're clean and sober. You understand? There's going to be intensive outpatient treatment with probation. We're going to do the UA hotline until further notice. Field visits two times per month, random. There's the regular uh, reporting by Zoom or in person. What that means is Probation no longer does Zoom reporting. You can't have Zoom reporting. Or if something happens and you're not allowed to report by Zoom, your phone's not working or something, you'll need to report in person. Do you understand? All right, Rebecca, is there anything else that she needs? Um, no, Judge, I believe you got everything. All right. Ms. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Um, the Did you mention field visits? Yes. Uh, Phil, oh, yes, I do. I do got that. The two times. Right. Thank you.
You're welcome. Ms. Lehman, is there anything else you need from the court in order to be successful? No, ma'am. All right, so here's the other thing. When I say you're not to work as a home health care provider, that means if you're taking care of your mom, you're not allowed to get funding from the government to do no. that. You understand? Yeah. All right. Next, I'm going to show you what's entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Or did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand that? And because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question about what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak with your attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, so what to probation will go in conditions with you. All right, who is on Fabian Vega? 